Hello, this is Ask Anastasia and today I'm gonna continue to talk about credit. Uh, if it's first time on my channel for you, I'm talking about credit, about um, investing in real estate, how to manage your financing, how to get passive income, how to retire earlier, all this good stuff. If you're interested, please subscribe. If you're not, you can just skip this video. So, um, yesterday I was talking about step number one, what to do and how to start building your credit. And um, step number one for me, I'm not sure um, if everybody gonna agree with me on it, but I believe that the easiest way to build the credit is just to be added as an authorized user. Um, I'm gonna post link for this video above, it's like three minutes. But today I'm gonna talk about step number two, what do you do? First, as I uh, told you before, make sure you have any credit monitoring website. I'm using Credit Karma, it's so many other ones. I'm sure you can be able to find it yourself. Um, then you wait for at least one month after somebody added you as an authorized user. And when you see that three cards it's showing on your credit, uh, we're going to step number two, which you start applying for your own credit cards. First card that I would recommend it's um, with your local bank. Wherever you have your checking account, just go to your bank and apply for a credit card with them. If it's gonna be denied, which is very unlikely, you can always ask for secured credit card and secured credit card it's you're putting your money there let's say it's gonna be five hundred dollars that you're gonna give it to them but in exchange they are gonna report that you have a credit card for five hundred dollars and every month you're gonna get bill like for a usual credit card and you pay this bill and I would say in about six months you can go there and tell them that Look, right now you can see that I'm a responsible person. Please uh, turn this secured credit card to unsecured and they're gonna return this $500 that you give it to them. And then you, you're gonna start having your first credit card. Another option that you can have is to go to any retail store, you know, like um, TG Maxx, Home Depot is a good one. You know, if you're into projects, if you like to be involved in real estate, having Home Depot credit card or Lowe's credit card, it's really good. You can also try any online retailers, you know, and what I'm talking about, it's Amazon, Amazon.com, and they usually, they offer you about 5%, um, I believe, you know, like rewards that you spend the money and then they give you 5% off, which is great. Uh, I also tried PayPal. Uh, if you have a PayPal account, you can also apply for a credit card. Uh, so it, it's a lot of options how to do it. And then we're gonna move to uh, what to do after you have credit card, which is the most important part. Um, first of all, be responsible. I cannot tell you how many people, you know, when they're trying to get credit cards, just take them as, oh, free money, you know, and it's, it's really, really bad. I was one of those. <laughs> and, uh, you know, uh, as I told you before, I have to file for a bankruptcy. I had about 96,000 in credit card debt. And it's adding up very fast, you know, when you you want something you just give this piece of plastic and they swipe it you don't even think about it but you know I was making payments for about uh, a year I would say and my minimum payment on all of this credit card was about two thousand dollars and when I check my balances my balances were not going down because what's happened when credit card sees that uh, you spend a lot of money, it's really hard to talk them into uh, lower your interest rate. Your interest rates, it's gonna be like 30%, 29%, 25% per year. 
So, you know, when you're buying this pair of glasses for a hundred bucks, you don't think about it, but if it's gonna take you three years to pay it off, it's gonna cost you about $200, you know. Um, just try to be responsible with it. And uh, number one rule for using a credit card, you cannot spend more than 30% of the credit limit. And let me explain what I'm talking about. Let's say you got a Home Depot credit card for $1,000. If you're gonna spend 900 out of this 1,000 and you're gonna pay it in one week in full, it's not good. What's happened, you never know when credit card is reporting their balances to the credit bureau. So if it's gonna be reported in the time when you spent $900 out of $1,000, even you paid it in two days, it's still gonna be shown on your credit report that you spent 90% of your credit limit. And usually how banks are looking at it, that you are spending a lot of money that they give it to you. And from their eyes, it's not good. Uh, goal is not to spend more than three hundred dollars on this one hundred uh, on this thousand dollar card. You know, if you spend three hundred dollars, you paid off. You spend two hundred dollars, you paid off. In six months, this is rule number two. What I'm doing every six months, you have to call all your, all your credit cards and ask them to increase your credit limit. So let's say you got this $1,000 credit card from Home Depot. In six months, what you're gonna do, you're gonna pick up the phone, call this number on the back of your card, call them and say, I'd like to increase my credit limit. Sometimes it's an uh, automatic system, you know, just by phone. Sometimes it's person who's gonna pick up. Um, from my experience, what I see it, if let's say because they're asking you a couple of questions first it's how much you're making then they're asking you how much is your mortgage or how much is your rent and um, they are looking at your total income so let's say if you're gonna say your credit uh, your gross income is 30,000 and your uh, rent is $1,000 per month chances that they're not gonna increase your credit limit a lot um, the more your gross income the better and I'm not advising you to lie in any way but they're not checking any of this information and if you want to uh, have high credit limit you need to make more money let me put it this way um, and uh, Again, it's from my experience. After I filed for a bankruptcy, my first credit card from Bank of America was $500, and this was 10 years ago. Right now, because I'm calling every six months and asking them to increase the limit, I also never been late on my credit card since I filed for a bankruptcy. I learned a lot. Uh, my credit limit right now is 67,500, and what is good about having this credit limit um, they're sending you if you're paying on time they're mail mailing me uh, convenience checks with zero percent interest for 12 months I would say every two to three months so let's say if I find a deal uh, with a real estate that I want to buy a house but in I don't have money today I can always write this zero percent check from the credit card and buy a house and as you know my houses that we're buying it's in a price range like up to $30,000 so I can write this full price for $30,000 and got the house and then when I fix the house and rent it I'm gonna pay this credit card out of the income that this house produced to me um, this is in general all idea about having passive income because uh, me buying houses yes we do work on them I, I find the deals then we fix them then we rent them I also also 
currently I'm managing all our properties, but in the future I hope we're gonna have a good manager who's gonna do it for us and it's gonna become truly passive income because uh, our goal like five to ten years we will not have any debt on our houses and all the money that's gonna come it's gonna be clear passive income um, so I hope it was helpful just build your credit this is very important and if you like the video please click this like button if you don't like it hate my accent leave a comment you know it's also helping me to grow my channel thank you guys and I really appreciate all of you have a good day